Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I just want to talk a little bit about my new all-time favorite paint color that I've gotten. And actually I think I had it or first got it a couple of months ago so I've used it quite a bit and because of that I know now that this is definitely a huge favorite of mine. So I want to talk about it, give some of the reasons why I love it and I've been thinking a lot about that <laughs> lately now that Inktober is over and I can revisit a lot of my watercolors that I've really missed. But I do want to give a really quick announcement in reference to Inktober. If you still wanted to get a copy of Omen from my Kickstarter and get all of those extra stretch goals that are included free with any book tier, there is a link right down in the description. It actually ends tomorrow at midnight mountain standard time. So make sure that you head over there, check it out and see what you can get for it. But, but moving on, we can go ahead and talk about what I'm working on today. So the actual paint that I'm using, my, my new all time favorite is actually a Daniel Smith paint. And this one is called Serpentine Genuine. And I did a little swatch where I showed just the paint and how it reacts on the paper. And hopefully you can see it, but how it separates. So that's one of my favorite things about this paint is that it's a granulating paint, which means that the different particles that make up the overall color that separates as the paint dries. So you'll start to see certain areas that have some of that yellow pigment a little bit more. And I love that it has a real depth to it, which I think adds a lot to a piece, but it also really makes it enjoyable for me to work with it and see what's going to happen and how exactly those pigments are going to settle. I also find that because it's this very multi-dimensional kind of paint, that I can play off of those other colors in the paint by using other paints that, that tie into those and they have this really harmonizing effect. I absolutely love it. Like I said, it has this like, almost like a burnt yellow pigment inside of it that shows through sometimes the way it dries. And it actually looks very similar in a way to one of my fine tech gold paints which is one of my all time favorite supplies. I used it when I was doing that little sample swatch, but that's actually one thing that I love to do with this paint in particular is to draw from that yellow and bring it in. And it just ties so nicely with those golden tones that are already in the paint. And then it just brings a little bit of extra shimmer to it. That's actually what I did for this piece in the background. I mixed in just a little bit of that gold every once in a while so that it would have kind of this really subtle shimmer. It It's definitely not obvious, but when you hold it up to the light, you can see that it hits it just a little bit differently. And I, I love that. I love how this paint allows me to bring out different aspects of it like that. And one of my favorite ways to use this paint is to really emphasize the granulating way that it has. So one of those things is that I'll use a lot of water and then I'll bring in that paint on top of it. That allows the pigments to shift around a lot as it's drying. So that way I'll have different sections that have more of that yellow, other areas that have more of the green. And by allowing it to really move around as it dries rather than drying it very quickly with say my heat gun, I, I get some more of that dimension into it. So, so first off I use a lot of water I don't use my heat gun when I want it to be really granulating and I want to see how the paint reacts itself. And then after I get this like base layer of it, I'll go back in with a more concentrated dose of that paint. I'll go in with a brush and, and I'll just take a little bit of the paint right from, from my, the paint in the pan rather than from a mixture with the water. And then I drop that into my still wet paint and then I get this really rich burst of that concentrated serpentine genuine paint color. And I actually have been really enjoying using that kind of a technique with, with any of my wet on wet mixtures or paints, paint washes. There we go. <laughs> and, um, I, I've loved that effect. Actually, it really does emphasize the granulating nature of it, but also using it with paints that aren't granulating. It, it creates a little bit more of this textured effect that feels a little bit like it has a life of its own. And I actually visited this exact same palette earlier in October, which I love being able to do another piece later on that has that exact tie earlier to the that early piece. But I, I loved it then and I love it now where I can have this really rich saturated 
very colorful background and then the foreground figures are all in grayscale. I actually, I love that even if it was independent of Inktober or trying to do things in grayscale. I, I would still love that look. I've always loved it where I can allow certain things to have full control over parts of the piece like this with the color. And I, I just, I love that effect. I think it has a lot of interest to it over what I normally do. And it also makes it a lot less tortured when it comes to me planning out my colors. It's just like this breath of fresh air to know that certain areas are going to be just values and others are going to be just this rich expression of watercolors and texture. And I love that. I love being able to take a step back like that. And I actually forgot almost all the way through sketching and inking that, that this boy character that he has the skeletonized appearance. So I needed to make sure that I got that in there one for the story and two for continuity sake. But, but I, I just went in while it was just mostly done with the painting, I pulled up an app that I actually use very frequently. And this is not sponsored by them. I just really love this app, but the app's called Skelly if you're interested. Um, I'll probably have a link down in the description, but basically you can just 3D model this skeleton or 3D pose the skeleton, I should say. It's a phone app. I love it, but I just posed it up to the same position that he was in. And then I sketched out where his bones would be and that allowed me to work very quickly and to get the exact position of the bone. So if you're ever curious how I get the approximation of bones when I do this kind of effect, I pretty much always use that app. It's incredible. I really do love it. And after I finished up the, the base layer of that light sketchy kind of line work for his skeleton and then the value on top of that, I decided that I wanted to bring just a little bit more gold into this piece. And actually, I really loved working with it in the way that I did. And I love the effect of it. I didn't want it to be really eye-catching. I wanted it to be more of a secondary detail to it. Something that felt really subtle. So I, I went in and I made sure that it was a really good consistency. And again, this is the same fine tech gold paint that I used earlier, but I made sure that it was not too thin, that it wouldn't be opaque, but not so thick that it would be pasty and hard to work with. And then I just went in with these very soft, light little strokes that built up almost this sketchy quality. And I just went around the edges of his bones and through most of it for his like arm bones and finger bones. And it just creates this really subtle look. It ties in with the background a little bit more. I also added just like a hint of gold to a few of the pieces of jewelry that the other character is wearing just to give this a very, very subtle. Again, it was like this tiny, tiny dot, but it still, I think, ties them together, ties them with the background. And I love things like that. Even when they're super subtle, they still visually have that connection. And as always, I do have this original painting available at my shop. There's a link right down in the description that'll take you over there. And don't forget to check out the Kickstarter for Omen, this year's Inktober art book. I'm incredibly excited about it and the whole stretch goals that I can give you guys for free as long as you pledge for any of the book tiers. But yeah, we're actually on the home stretch with that one. It ends tomorrow. That is November 4th, midnight mountain standard time. So make sure that you get over there and check it out so that you can get all of the goodies that I have for the Kickstarter. But that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.